the factor theorem. We're going to suppose p of x is degree one or more polynomial, and c is a real number. If p of c equals zero, what that means is when you plug in c for x and you get out a y value of zero, that happens exactly when c comma zero, so x value c, y value zero is an x-intercept. This is basically the definition of an x-intercept. When x is this value and y is zero, you have an x-intercept. There's a remainder theorem, and what that tells us is uh, p of x divided by x minus c equals p of c. If we know p of c is already zero, uh, what this tells us is, and this is the remainder, it tells us the remainder is zero. So I shouldn't write equals zero. Uh, this should be remainder. So this has remainder zero. So do you, when do you get remainder zero? When this division works out perfectly, you're going to see this. Hopefully our division will work out perfectly. And that's going to be our check. We should get a remainder zero. So remainder zero is going to be a big deal. When do you not get remainder zero? You could either have made a mistake in your division or you're dividing by something that's not a factor. So if you get a remainder zero, x minus c will be a factor of p of x. The big theorem in this section is corresponding x-intercepts or zeros to factors. This double arrow means exactly when. So that means if you know you have an x-intercept, you also know you have a factor. So here is a x-intercept, here's a factor. So I like to think of this as if x equals c, if this is a zero, the corresponding factor will be x minus c. Now pay attention over here, it looks like c, it looks like this should be x plus c, but it really is the opposite sign. So if x equals c is a zero, x minus c will be a factor. That sign, it looks like the sign changes. The way I like to think about it, if you plug in c where you see x, you get c minus c, subtract that, which is zero.